I ended up getting like kind of a little bit of an injury. Pray for me on this run. I'm definitely being dramatic. It is literally like a healthy cocaine. <laughs> my main focus is recovering my shins so that they heal before the race. Hello everyone, welcome back to our community. We are doing a full week of prep for the Brooklyn Half Marathon. We are like a little over a week away. It is Thursday, the week before, and I'm gonna show you everything I'm doing, which I was really excited to film this. I've been planning this for a while. And what I'm realizing about racing and being a runner is that not every race goes as planned. And I have been dealing with shin splints. So I'm actually not really gonna be running, I don't think, this week. But my main focus is recovering my shins and doing everything I can so that they heal and the inflammation heals before the race. And I'm gonna go to the gym to get a Peloton in. If you are someone who's struggling with shin splints or just trying to heal some sort of inflammation before a race, Peloton or spin bike is a really great way to keep the cardio and the endurance and get the blood flowing so the legs don't stiffen up without the impact of like jumping on your feet. So I'm gonna go do a Peloton, easy steady ride for like 30 minutes or so. Stretch, foam roll, just do all the recovery things. Just have an overall good attitude. So let's prep for this race. Okay, next day, it's Friday, and I felt good from the spin bike. I definitely didn't feel any pain, like it definitely didn't exacerbate anything. So if you're someone who is trying to do a lower impact situation but keep your cardio up for similar reasons, it's a really good solution. So today I'm supposed to do strength training, so I'm laying off the legs, I'm not doing any leg work. I don't wanna put pressure on my shins. We are one week out from the race and I'm just trying to literally not touch my shin until the race. Today I'm gonna do arms and abs. I'm gonna do a Sydney Cummings video just to do some strength and I'll do mobility exercises. So that'll be really great to just like keep my hips loose, blood flow and everything good and stretch my calves a little bit without putting any pressure or impact on them. And I'm just praying for a miracle. I feel fine, but there's just like this one spot in my left shin that like when I'm walking for long enough, you just feel it and it just really won't go away. So I have my potion. We have element in here, creatine, beta alanine, which is like literally makes you feel like you just did drugs. Best pre-workout ever. Let's go work out. I just did a 45 minute spin and it felt great. I used my compression socks. I'm starting to feel a little bit like, all right, stop walking, let's go home and ice. But I just have a good feeling. So I'm gonna go make some food. Okay, so I have been starting to carb load a little bit. It's still early in the week, but I'm trying to just make sure that I kind of get adjusted to eating more carbs than I'm used to. And that is resulting in me feeling honestly really bloated and constipated. So we're gonna do my Bye Bye Bloat routine by Love Wellness. You guys know I'm obsessed with them. And it starts with these two Bye Bye Bloat capsules. So these have digestive enzymes and a blend of herbs that helps alleviate bloating, but like nice natural ingredients. When I say natural, I mean they're literally using like fennel seed, ginger, like whole food powders, dandelion root, ginger root, things like that. Okay, next we're gonna use the firming mask on my belly. So with the mask, I'm tightening and depuffing. It's made with antioxidant rich caffeine, which helps boost circulation. It has peppermint oil in it, which is gonna promote firmer and tighter skin. There's antibacterial green tea, which supports aging skin and aids in hydration. So I just kind of apply a nice layer here, let it firm up, and then I'm gonna, once it dries off, use some warm water to rinse. Okay, now that we're all rinsed, I'm gonna use the detox 
detoxifying body oil. So this is a lymphatic drainage body oil. It's a really silky, lightweight formula. It has grapefruit oil, which helps reduce swelling, and it's a lymphatic stimulant. It has peppermint oil in it, which helps with inflammation, and it just feels so damn good. And then for the fun part, so I initially thought that this was like a vibrating tool. No, it's literally just a roll-on tool. I have a whole video on this, but you essentially want to move the massager towards your lymph nodes. And this is just going to help depuff the skin. It boosts circulation. It encourages lymphatic flow. And again, it just feels so damn good. So thank you, Love Wellness, for sponsoring this portion of the video. And you can use Gen 15 for 15% off all products on lovewellness.com. I'll put the promo code, the link in the description. I love to partner with brands that I genuinely love and use and believe in and their ingredients. Nothing beats it. So this is going to be a part of my routine this week. Oh, show. Good morning. It is Sunday. So yesterday I did a Peloton for 45 minutes and I just found myself getting really excited. It was, it's just so funny how much easier that is than running because I was just doing like, I did an 80 to 90 cadence the entire time and just stayed in the saddle. So it was pretty like easy, all things considered compared to going for like a 10 mile run or something. I'm icing my shins right now and we're doing a full Sunday recovery day. We are now six days out. I'm gonna go pick up my bib this week. I might ice bath. I don't know. We're gonna do a lot of things, but mainly here are the supplements I'm taking every day. Advil to decrease inflammation and help with my shin pain. I will definitely be taking that morning of race day, night before. Fish oil for inflammation. I'm continuing with my potion before I do any sort of workout, which is creatine, beta alanine, and electrolyte. Starting tomorrow, we're gonna like sit down and do a whole plan today with my run coach. Actually, no, I talked to her tomorrow. Yeah, I talked to my run coach tomorrow and we're gonna sit down and do a whole strategy for the race for race day. So we'll do a whole breakdown after that call tomorrow, but it's time to like really lock in my nutrition, making sure I have carbs with every dinner at least, electrolytes in my water. I'm gonna try to have an element every day and I'm going to get assisted stretched right now and I'm gonna do the compression boots. I'm trying to just stay super positive. I'm not in a lot of pain. I just feel a little discomfort in a very specific spot in my shin every single day, but when I posted on Instagram the other day when I was like kind of all of a sudden upset over it, I got so many DMs of people saying, this is so normal, like aches and pains are gonna pop up closer to race day because you've just put your body through so much. And if you just rest, like something magical happens on race day, my friend Brianna, was like before the London Marathon, she was straight up injured and just something magical happens on race day with the endorphins and the energy and everything. So hopefully, I'm hopeful because it's not a bad injury that the fresh legs will pull me through and the excitement of like, I haven't ran in three weeks will pull me through. So I'm still hopeful, but I'm definitely still like nervous. The thing is it would make me feel better if I went for a run and was fine, but I'm nervous that I'm gonna go for a run and be uncomfortable and then just get discouraged. So we'll see. I'm gonna talk about all this with my run coach tomorrow, but. Let's go have a recovery day at Stretched. These compression boots, especially after a long run, feel so necessary. I obviously haven't been going on long runs, but I still feel like it's gonna be amazing for my shins. If you've never done them, it just feels like high pressure, like compression. <laughs> It's Monday. I got all stretched yesterday and he said that I am really tight. Tighter than I've been. That's <laughs> great to hear. The good news is and the nerve wracking news is I actually feel good today. I mean, I'm fully icing right now. That won't stop. I'm going to be a psycho all week. I want to get an ice bucket. I'm going to try to book an ice bath, but I also want to just like get an ice bucket at home and like dunk my legs in them every night. I'm being psychotic. I'm just doing everything I possibly can to combat the inflammation and clearly it's working. So I'm going to attempt to go on a three mile run. My biggest fear is aggravating my legs again, but I'm not wearing those crazy shoes again. 
and if I feel something, I'll stop. So there's no way it's gonna like take another two weeks to heal. So part of me was like, wait, I think I should just like, I'm feeling good, why don't I just like not run until the race? But my run coach and Ethan have both said like, if you feel good, you should try to. And if it feels bad, like you just stop, but like it's not gonna change anything. So I'm gonna give it a whirl. I'm gonna be so nervous. I've never been nervous to go for a run before in terms of like, am I gonna get injured? I'm definitely being dramatic. I will probably feel one thing and stop. So let's give it a whirl. It's Monday, we still have until Saturday. If it didn't feel great, I could still not run until the race, but I think it's worth trying to run today. All right, we're gonna make the potion, drink the potion while I stretch. As long as I do a good dynamic stretch, we should be okay to run. Like I'm feeling really good. Okay, so we start the potion with an element. I always do citrus salt, it's my favorite flavor. We actually have a variety pack and I never tap into that one because I just love this one so much. Guys, I gotta get a pedicure this week too, or just cut my toes, I don't have to get a pedicure. Electrolytes in. Beta alanine, this is the key. I will never stop talking about it. Ethan introduced me. Makes your whole face tingle when you first try it, but it is literally like a healthy cocaine <laughs> and helps with recovery and all that too. It's just like magical on race morning. I drank this my last half marathon cycle too, and on race morning, I brought one of these and drank it 30 minutes before. The only thing with that is I had to pee so bad. I like literally, I the entire like 45 minutes before the race started was just, this is creatine by the way, was getting on the porta potty line, peeing and getting back on it. Like I was so terrified about how much I hydrated that morning and the night before. And I think what I learned through that is with Element, you actually do need a lot of water or you can get like a bad stomach. So I'm gonna have that in the morning first thing and definitely the night before. But in terms of like my potion right before, cause the beta alanine you need to have like 20 minutes before, it like works instantly. So I'll drink it right before I head out. I'm just gonna have the beta alanine in a little bit of water, not with element where I need a lot of it, if that makes sense. So just refining over the weeks and I'm just in a really good mood today cause guys, my leg feels so much better. So let's pray for me on this run. So I'm currently watching my favorite YouTuber for all things like warm up stretches and cool down stretches. Her name is Julia Rappel. She does not speak. It's high quality. You can tell that like the warm ups are just unique and work. All of her mobility stretches, I just love it so much. And if you're someone who also struggles to get a stretch in because it's just so boring, I've been there and what I do is I have her on mute because she doesn't speak anyway and any like cues are in text. I follow along and like I'm listening to a podcast and that is my pro tip. Or I'll be watching TV, like watching a YouTube video, watching a TV at night and I have this on my phone on mute and I'm following the stretches while like being entertained. So. That's a pro tip. That's why I love her videos because you don't need, she doesn't speak. <laughs> oh my God, I feel so good. I'm only like a half smile in, but no pain. I'm so happy. One mile in, and more than anything, I just have like dehydration cramps. So, gotta hydrate a lot this week. I feel my shin a little bit, but like, it's totally fine. And I think it's better to kind of get back adjusted into running. But we're good. I feel like I forgot how to run for long. <laughs> I'm so scared. All right, I'm stopping at 1.8 because my shin's starting to hurt, and I just think, let's be smart. But we did it. When I first started running, I was really excited. And now after, I'm like, ugh. I just don't feel like I have, Stella doesn't have her groove. To be fair, I'm gonna be the most prepared ever for the actual race. I just, I ran with compression socks and I have an ice pack now between my legging and the compression sock and I'm making eggs and avocado. I felt very bloated and crampy from like dehydration and whatnot. So I think that was mainly why I didn't feel so good. And then I stopped at 1.8 miles cause I started to feel that part of my shin act up. It was not painful. I easily could have ran through it, which is, gives me hope for actual race day that like I will be good 
to run through it. I'm actually more now concerned about like my stamina. Like I just haven't really run in a couple of weeks and I have to remind myself that I've been so consistent with training. Like you have no idea if you haven't been watching. Like I have been beyond consistent with training, honestly, really fast. I think that's why I ended up getting like kind of a little bit of an injury. So I just have to remember that like, it's not like your fitness can decline in three weeks. Like I will be fine. I'm just annoyed. I'm like ready for this to be over with, you know? Like let's just run this shit. I got this little shot of ginger, turmeric, lemon, Camu Camu, I don't know what that is, Himalayan salt and black pepper oil. And I'm gonna take it for inflammation, I'm making hard All right, cheers. It didn't have cayenne in it, so it's not too brutal to take, but whew. Okay, Monday, I'm done. I have a call with my run coach in an hour, so I'll see you then. continue to take this really seriously because and have fun <laughs> because I was gonna like pace out my entire run on my Garmin watch and I still want to even though I've been like having to rest and whatnot I don't want to like change how I was gonna run this race unless I'm during the race feeling like I should change how I was gonna run it like I really want to stick to the original plan so I hope that my run coach Lizzie is okay with that I'm rushing because I'm late hi Hello. I just can't believe this is the last, this is like the call. I know. You made it. Race week. Woohoo. Bittersweet, but yes. Again, we'll talk about it with the plan, but yeah. you've even said it yourself before. Just because you're feeling bad in one moment during the race, mm -hmm. if that pops up, doesn't mean it's True. automatically a disaster, you know? Like, if you have to walk for a couple minutes or just reset or stretch a little bit, you can still get back in there. It's not that one little moment is going to destroy this plan because race day is just all about adjusting to the current situation, doing the best that you can. Um, and I really feel confident you can have a very good day. Okay, same. Okay, so rest of this week. So we have yoga Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. I'll put in some notes, but just short run and just really focus on that dynamic warm up and walking into it and then walking any stretching and last minute prep on Friday. Okay. yoga class outside at Hudson Yards, which is perfect because I want to do a lot of yoga this week for my movement. And honestly, I'm getting so excited for this race to be done because tapering is hard when you're used to being really active and you want to like go do a workout class, but you're supposed to just like barely do anything the last week before your race. I feel disgusting. <laughs> from hot yoga and showered. Our weekly, Ethan and I go at our gym to hot yoga every single Wednesday morning. And so I did yoga twice this week. Tomorrow's Thursday, the race is Saturday. So I'm gonna go for a shakeout run on Thursday. Just in case my shins get aggravated, I would rather do the run Thursday, rest Friday, run Saturday. If I end up wanting to go for a shakeout run Friday too, I can, but I'm gonna go into it with my little run tomorrow. So I do wanna just show you, I have been loving using my Garmin watch for speed workouts throughout training. So I would plug it into my Garmin app and I would be like mile one, warm up, mile two between these paces. And then like when I would be on my run, it would ding when the mile was up and be like, now you have to go this pace. And it would tell me if I was above the speed I was supposed to be at or under or on target. And it was really helpful. So I was like, I wanna do something like that for the race. So I was playing around with the app and I saw that there's something called Pace Pro. I typed in Brooklyn Half into Garmin on my desktop. I was trying to do this on the phone app, but you have to do it on your desktop to plug in a course map. So I found the 2024 Brooklyn Half course map. The reason it's important to do the exact course for your Pace Pro is because it takes the elevation into account. So let's say you did like no course 
and you just did like, I want to run a half marathon at this pace, you'll see like the negative splits, right? Which means you get faster every mile. But if you plug in the exact course, it's going to take into account, which is great because it's going to be more realistic, the hills throughout your run. So you could be negative splits and then there's a big hill and it'll, you know, pace you out to give you some wiggle room to go slower then and then maybe faster downhill. So anyway, I found it so helpful. It basically helped me figure out like what goal target pace I should have for every single mile. And although I was hoping for more of a range, I think this will be really great. I'm going to try not to obsess over it during the run and stare at my watch. But I think it'll be really great to kind of take a look and be like, what pace am I supposed to be going at right now to reach my goal of sub two hours? If you're running for pace, I think this is so helpful and amazing. And it'll tell you like if you're ahead of schedule and gonna, you know, beat your time or if you're behind and then you can kind of like speed up. So I plugged that all in and it's synced to my watch. So I'm gonna test that out for the race. The next few days I'm going to vlog as well, going to pick up my bib the night before laying everything out, like when I'm taking my gels, all of that, I will have in the next vlog as well as like, of course, race day. So Thursday to Saturday will be the next vlog. So come back for that one. You will prep for the race the day before with me. You will get ready with me in the morning. We will go to the race together and hopefully all goes as planned. If you are running a half marathon soon, if you're running this one, comment down below. I'm rooting for you. Please subscribe if you're new and I will see you all next week. Mwah.